Okay, so in this section, um, just a, a quick overview uh, in 14.3. We're going to use these identities, which this is in a little bubble here because it's a memory. We remember this stuff. We've seen it before. We've got what, what are called the reciprocal identities, and we have what's called the tangent and cotangent identities. Right, remember that the secant is 1 over the cosine. Cosecant is 1 over the sine. Cotangent is 1 over the tangent. That's what that should say instead of saying 1 over itself. Should say one over tangent. Tangent sine over cosine, cotangent reciprocal of that, cosine over sine. We have these things called the Pythagorean identities. Sine squared plus cos cos cosine squared equals one. Uh, we have these other ones that like you could get this one right here by dividing everything by the sine squared. Divide this by sine squared, you get one. Divide this by sine squared, you get cosine squared over sine squared, which is cotangent squared. One over cosine squared, or sorry, one over sine squared would be cosecant squared. And here you get this one by taking everything, dividing this everything by the cosine squared. Okay, so look at those. But but first, let's use these uh, reciprocal identities uh, on some of these homework problems. So you see here, I have, I have the numbers in Roman numerals as opposed to the other numbers. I don't want to mislead you and confuse you. I've just changed things around a bit, uh, and now this um, should help you with the problem you're looking at from the actual homework. All right, so one strategy here, one main strategy, would be to use these reciprocal identities. And these, right, really mostly these, okay, we'll rarely write cotangent as 1 over tangent. We want to take anything and write it as, you know, in terms of sine and cosine. And here's why we would want to do that. Let's just do that. Okay, so cosine's already cosine. We don't need to write that in terms of sine and cosine. It is cosine. Uh, now we write the tangent as sine over cosine. Okay, and look, we're multiplying these. Look, what, look what, what happens here. Cosine cancels cosine, and it simplifies to sine. Okay, you see what I mean? We write this in terms of sine and cosine, and since we're multiplying, it cancels out those cosines. Okay, maybe you've got something else. Maybe sines will cancel. Maybe uh, uh, when a cosine's canceled, you're left with something other than the sine. Okay, and actually, we'll see that uh, in a few different ways here. Okay. Since we're multiplying these things together, I would say let's hope for some cancellation uh, if we turn these all into fractions again. Right, so if we turn the secant, uh, write this, uh, this in terms of sine and cosine, that's 1 over the cosine. Okay, And then we're multiplying this by the cosine. Multiply this by sine squared over cosine squared. Let's see what happens. Uh, the cosine cancels with this cosine. And then nothing really cancels with this one. So we could just leave it as tangent squared x. Okay. So these cancel out. That's just 1. 1 times sine squared over cosine squared just would leave you with tangent squared. OK, I just uh, realized, well, I just thought that was too easy. And then I, I looked at the problem again, and I, I did not write it down correctly. This should have a plus in it. So she'd be looking at a problem that's kind of like that, more like what I, more than what I did. Okay, but still, let's let's do that same thing. Secant is uh, one over the cosine. This is cosine over one, and we'll just leave this as tangent squared for a second. Uh, these cancel each other out. We got one plus tangent squared. Okay. Something that, that would be helpful to you, if you see a, a something squared and a 1 and an addition or subtraction, you should be thinking about the Pythagorean identities. Okay, 1s and pluses and minuses and squared uh, trig values, really um, a common thing to come up in these uh, trig identities and simplification and stuff like that. So what could this be? Let's go back to here. And look at that. 1 plus tangent squared, tangent squared plus 1, it's all the same thing. That is the same as secant squared. So this comes out to be secant squared x. And that would be it. That would be our simplified version, secant squared x. Okay, so we wrote these in terms of sine and cosine. Anytime there's multiplication or division, let's write it in terms of sine and cosine. And probably there'll be some stuff that cancels out. All right. And then when we have addition and subtraction and squared things, then a lot of times we'll get a Pythagorean identity to fall out. All right, what do we 
we do here? Hmm. Well, 1 plus the cotangent squared. Now that is a Pythagorean identity. So if we go look at the Pythagorean identities, we find this is the cosecant squared. This is sine theta times cosecant squared. So if you were to look at that, fir that first page of 14.3, look at the uh, Pythagorean identities, we would find that 1 plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. So we just replace that with cosecant squared. All right, um, well now it's just pure multiplication. So let's write this in terms of sine and cosine. Well this, here's something that, that may need some clarification. Like cosecant is 1 over the sine, right? So cosecant squared is the same as 1 over sine squared. The thing that may need clarification here is that cosecant squared, or any, anything that's written like this with the square here, what it really means is the cosecant squared, right? So the cosecant squared, the, the cosecant is 1 over sine, right? And then if we square that, right, we're taking this up to here, and then we're bringing it down through this line of reasoning. 1 over sine times 1 over sine would be 1 over sine squared, which is the same as writing this. Okay. So 1 over sine squared is the same as cosecant squared. Um, which, if, if we remember the 1 over sine squared, what it means is 1 over sine times sine. Then uh, maybe make it easier to look at it like this. 1 over sine theta times sine theta. Well, this sine cancels one of these signs. Sine divided by sine is 1 left with 1 over sine, and that is the cosecant. Okay, so that's our final answer. That's the most simplified version of that. All right, so that's one option. Actually, we could uh, do this at least one more way, maybe more ways. Uh, let's start with the original. This one's going to take a few more steps, but it's just another idea. Let's distribute this into the parentheses. Sine theta plus sine theta cotangent theta, or cotangent squared theta. Okay, got sine squared plus, okay, what's this? Um, this cotangent squared is cosine squared over sine squared. Sine theta times cosine squared over sine squared. Okay, so this sine cancels out one of these signs, so that leaves us with sine theta plus Cosine squared theta over sine theta. Okay, now what? Now this will, will happen sometimes. We'll be adding things together that are fractions. Nothing's canceling out. Uh, it's not working in our favor. So let's turn them into two fractions that have the same denominator. Right? So we'll multiply by sine over sine. So that'll be your common denominator of sine. So that's sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta over the common denominator, sine of theta. All right, sine squared plus cosine squared. We remember from the front page of this uh, homework problem set, Co sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So that's 1 over sine. And again, we get the cosecant. Same thing. All right, just another idea. All right, sine squared over tangent squared. When, remember when I said we, when there's multiplication and there's division, let's hope that if we write these as fractions, there's some cancellation that happens. Right, so we'll leave, and, and remember to write these all in terms of sine and cosine. Don't, like, don't write this as 1 over cosecant. That's not very helpful. Okay, but sine squared x over sine squared x over cosine squared x, because tangent squared is the same as sine squared over cosine squared. And we got this divided by that fraction. When we have a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal squared x over 1 times cosine squared x over sine squared x. Sine squared, cancel sine squared. We're left with just a cosine squared x. OK, these are a little bit different. Uh, as opposed to the simplify, where it just gives you an expression that says simplify. You know, just take it down to as simple as you can get it. This one tells you, which you might like or you might not like, it gives you kind of like what this should work its way to. It should be able to, you should be able to rewrite this and, and mess with it, maybe cancel some things out and come out with a one, okay? So if we write this, since there's multiplication, I like to write uh, these in terms of sine and cosine and see if there's some cancellation that happens. If 
cosine x times 1 over cosine x. That's cosine over 1 times 1 over cosine. Cosine divides cosine, and we're left with 1. And that's what we're supposed to get. So we did it. We verified the identity. That's what that means. All right, cotangent of theta times secant theta times sine theta. Let me just make sure that that is uh, what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, it's supposed to be something like that. Equals 1. Let me try to verify that that's 1. Well, it's all multiplication. Let's see if we write these as fractions, uh, if we maybe can get some cancellation. Cotangent, that's cosine over sine. Secant, that's 1 over the cosine. Sine, that's sine. Right, remember, if it's already sine or cosine, no need to rewrite it as anything else. If we can get everything in terms of sine and cosine, then we can get some factors canceling out. Uh, the cosine cancels with the cosine. The sine divides this sine, and we're left with 1. This is 1 over 1 times 1 over 1 times 1 over 1. That's 1. That's what we're supposed to get. All right. OK, so this might be a little tricky. Um, we want to show that this and this are the same. Now, we could try and rewrite this so it looks exactly like this, or vice versa. We could try and rewrite like this. So it looks exactly like this. Or we can mess around with both sides, but not like add two to both sides or whatever. But just change this with the identities. Change this with the identities. Imagine like you don't do anything to both sides. You just change both sides uh, using the identities and see if you can come up with something. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, the cosine squared. If we look at the front page, we'll see that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Okay. If we subtract sine squared from both sides, we'll get that cosine squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. Okay. So what, am I, what, what is all this about? You see the cosine squared plus 1. Well, cosine squared plus 1 isn't really equal to anything. Even if I like tried to add one to this, then I add one to this side, and I had cosine plus one plus sine squared equals two. And but if I use this identity, I can rearrange it, solve for cosine squared, and then you know I could take this cosine squared and replace it with one minus sine squared. I could take this and put it in the place of cosine squared. So I haven't done anything with the one. There's still a one there, but now it's one plus one minus sine squared theta. OK, so we did it. So uh, 1 plus, there's really no reason to have these parentheses, so I, don't, I can kind of ignore them. 1 plus 1 is 2 minus sine squared theta. Right. Well, that is the same as the other side, so we're done. We have proved that they are the same. Okay. Um, but if we wanted to, um, you know, alternate reality, maybe we mess with this side and try to get it to look like that side. Okay, um, so let's see. Same kind of an idea here. If we use the Pythagorean identity and solve for sine squared, or maybe solve for negative sine squared, um, like actually, if we take what we have here, we've got cosine squared theta equals 1 minus, you have it's a minus sine squared. So we have the negative sine squared, so if we subtract 1 from both sides, we'll have cosine squared theta minus 1 is the same thing as negative sine squared theta. Okay? And of course, this is 2 plus negative sine squared theta. Right? Just write this the addition of a negative. So this can be replaced by this. So 2 plus cosine squared theta minus 1. The 2 minus 1 is 1, so you get 1 plus cosine squared theta. So whether we take this and make it look this way, which is the same as that, or not and, so you don't have to do both of these things. So either we take it this and, and use the identities and turn it into that, or we take this guy and use the identities and turn it into that. Or sometimes we'll uh, do some stuff and get you know both sides to look different than they started. Uh, but then to look the same as each other. Um, so let's see what. Let's see if I can get that. Um, this is not a very good example of that, but 
for now, this can be changed into that, and we're done. Done, no need for this black stuff. Or we can take this, change it into that, that's done. No need to do this magenta stuff. Okay, so two different possibilities. Okay, this one looks like there's gonna be some cancellation if you write them as fractions, so let's hope for that. Cosine x, oh, there's a plus there, not times. Okay, cosine x plus, well, let's see, sine x times uh, the tangent, um, which is sine over cosine. Okay, let's see what happens there. We get cosine x plus sine times sine sine squared over cosine. Um, or not cosine squared, just cosine of x. Okay. We'll see how this is just the secant. I'm going to separate these. This is just the secant. Like that's one thing. This is two different terms. So maybe if we can combine these two terms into one term, that one term can simplify to be the secant. Okay. So let's see. How do we do that? Well, we need, if we're going to add fractions, we need a common denominator. So denominator of cosine. Of course, we need to multiply this by cosine. That's going to give us cosine squared x over cosine plus sine squared x over cosine. I forgot the x over here. So we're going to add these together. And I'm just going to save a little time and erase this. Right, it's going to be cosine squared plus sine squared over the common denominator cosine. Okay, what's cosine squared plus sine squared? It's 1. Cosine x. One over cosine x is a secant. Um, and you know, secant is one over cosine x. So now they look the same. And this is uh, kind of a weak example, but like I was saying before, how you might change both sides, and they just wind up looking the same. Uh, instead of taking this one over cosine and just writing, oh, that's the secant. I turn secant into one over cosine. So both sides have changed the way they originally look. So neither one looks like they originally did, but they both look the same now, right? So um, we can change both sides at the same time. And as long as we've changed them using the identities and they both look the same, then we've shown that they're equivalent to each other, right? So that's that. That's the last one for this section. And so we're going to go on to 14.5. I should say 14. All right, so um, for this one, we're just going to decide um, what kind of a graph do we want to use, um, and then what are all the pieces. So do we want to use y equals a sine of b x minus h plus k, or do we want to use instead y equals a cosine b x minus h plus k, okay? And for, if we use the sine or the cosine, the, the only things that are going to change are obviously the sine and the cosine. Uh, and um, and this h here, probably, well, yeah, they're going to be different. And maybe a will be different, like we might choose to make it a negative or positive, depending on the, if it's the sine or the cosine, okay? But let's forget about all that and, and just find a few things that maybe pop out, as, pop out to us uh, pretty quickly. Um, let's see, it goes up to its maximum at 5 and down to the minimum at negative 5. So that means that it's like split right down the middle by the x-axis, which means there's no vertical shift. Okay, so there's no vertical shift. We know that k takes care of the vertical shift, so there's going to be no need for k. It doesn't shift up or down. It's clearly split down the middle by the x-axis because it goes just as far above the x-axis as below. So we'll just say, don't need a k. Um, let's see. Well, that makes it easy to figure out what a is, right? Because a is just uh, the absolute value of the amplitude, or the absolute value of a is the amplitude. So the amplitude is 5, because that goes 5 above the midline. So a must be 5. Or a might be negative 5, OK? 
just depending on whether we're going to use the sine or the cosine. Okay, so we'll decide that. Well, I'll, I'll actually go through both possibilities. Okay, so uh, a is five or negative five, depending on, on which equation we want to use, cosine or sine. Um, what else can we find? Um, well, from here to there, right? It goes from pi over two to pi. We're talking about the x coordinate here. It goes from pi over two to pi. If I take pi and subtract pi over two, pi minus pi over two, then I'll find the distance between pi and pi over two. Okay. So we get common denominators here, and we get pi over two. So from here to here is pi over two. That's half a period, because if I take another one of those, I'll go through a full period. Right? So period is equal to pi over two times two. Right? There's pi over two between here and there, and another pi over two will give us a full period, so we'll just multiply that by two and we get pi. Um, and if we look at the equation pi equal or period equals two pi over b, we multiply by b on both sides and divide by p on both sides to get b by itself because we're trying to figure out what b is, right? So uh, it's two pi over b. Or, sorry, p two pi over p. So b equals two pi over p which is, uh, let me figure this out, uh, pi, period. period is pi. So b is two, okay? And we're not gonna make that negative two pi, but so e either way we go, we're gonna have a two, okay? And again, this might be uh, five, might be negative five, depends on what we want to do with it, okay? So now, when we come down to choosing h, uh, what h is gonna be, and whether we're gonna use sine or cosine, we can kinda do that at the same time. So I'm going to go through this one, where we use cosine, and here's why. Because see how it gives us this maximum value, right? Well, cosine always starts at its maximum value, right? If it hasn't shifted, it starts up here and goes down like this, right? So it's like we have a cosine wave, because we know the cosine starts up at the maximum, goes down, and back up in its full period. So we can think of this as like the point that was on the y-axis and then got shifted to the right. So it got shifted to the right how much? It got shifted to the right pi over two. So this should be minus pi over two, right? If we use the cosine, minus pi over two. And um, if that's the cosine, well, it's, it's not upside down, right? So it doesn't need a negative. So it's just regular old uh, positive cosine. So we'll use a positive five. So five times cosine of two times x minus pi over two plus nothing would make this shape, okay? Uh, what about this guy right here? Well, let's see, do we wanna use a sine wave? So we're just gonna look at this graph and, and see if we can find a sine wave. It looks like this is a, a sine wave, like it starts at the midline, goes up like this, right? So I'll color code it, use the color that I wrote the sine equation in. This guy right here could be a sign, like part of a sine wave that got shifted to the right as well. Okay, so H will be a little bit different here, um, but it is a, you know, it starts at the midline, goes up just like the sine wave does. So this would be positive five as opposed to negative five. Right. And how much does it shift to the right? Let's see, um, from here down to here, is pi over two, right? So then from here down to here must be half of that, that's pi over two. So this must be pi over four, okay? So right there is pi over four. Okay, half of the, the distance that it takes to go from the top all the way to the bottom to go from the top to the middle should be pi over four which means that we could think of this as a sine wave that was like this and shifted over this much. So it shifted over pi over four, so we could use minus pi over four. 
uh, either way. And lots of different ways we could do it. By messing with h and uh, and whether u is sine or the cosine, we could do this in a, a lot of different ways. Like we could come over here and we could consider this to be the beginning of the period and it goes down and back up. So that'd be a negative, okay? And then we'd have a different h and we'd have a negative five instead of a positive five. But we've got two perfectly good ways to go. No need to complicate things. Okay, with this one, uh, it helps to draw these out. It helps to draw them out well and not really poorly. Right, so uh, there's pi over four, comma two, and zero, zero. So when they give you A and B, they're saying A is the max and B is the minimum. Okay. So it must be looking like that. So then we could, uh, I could trace out another one like this. And uh, yeah, by, just by doing that, we're looking at uh, figuring out what the period is, right? That's a full period from the bottom of a wave or, you know, to the top and then back to the bottom. Where would this be? Well, this is pi over 4, so this would have to be twice as big, pi over 2. Right, so that's pi over 2. That makes things easy. So the period is pi over 2. If you remember from what we did before, we found that b can be found by taking 2 pi divided by p. So b is equal to 2 pi over p, the period, which is pi over 2. Multiply this by the reciprocal of pi over 2, 2 pi over 1 times 2 over pi. Pi's cancel, and b is 4. So b is 4. So in y equals uh, a times, uh, well, is it going to be the sine or the cosine? We'll have to decide in a minute. Uh, times uh, of b times uh, x minus h plus k. We have found that b must be 4, so I'll just fill that in. Okay. Um, how about k? How, how far up is it shifted? Um, or maybe what's a? I mean, it's kind of up to you, but it goes from 0 up to 2, from 0 up to 2. So uh, cut that in half, and we found that k must be 1, and the amplitude must also be 1. So this is 1. And this is one. Okay. Um, let's see. Should we use the sine, the cosine? Well, you know, maybe this one isn't completely right because if you think about it, the cosine wave would look just like this, only it would be flipped over like this. Right? It would start at its maximum, we go down like that. So if we put a negative in front, it would flip it over just like this. So what if we did negative 1? We use the cosine. And since its maximum is right here at the y-axis, h is 0. So we get y equals negative cosine of x plus 1. All right. And one more. Uh, OK. No, I don't want that color. I want this color. Um, so again, it's very helpful to draw these out. OK, let's see, you got pi over 3, 3 pi. So it might help to count off by pi over 3. So pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4, 5, 5 over 3. OK, 5 pi over 3, 6 pi over 3, 7 pi over 3, 8 pi over 3, 9 pi over 3. If you take 9 pi over 3, it simplifies to 3 pi. Okay, so there's our 5 pi over 3 and our 3 pi. Uh, the maximum is a 5 pi over 3 comma 12. Right. So 5 pi over 3 comma 12. And this one is down at 3 pi comma 4. And trace out what we've come to understand is half of a period from there, from the maximum to the minimum, and start to figure stuff out. Right? You're going to do 
y equals a times, got to decide if we want the cosine or the sine, of b times x minus h plus k. All right. Um, all right, so let's get like a little bit more formulaic way of, of finding k and a. All right, so. Where is that midline? I'm going to take that back a bit. OK, so where is this? And whatever that is, that will be k, right? k tells us where the midline is. Um, well, k is exactly between 12, right in between 12. Right between 12 and 4. So what is the exact middle of 4 and 12? What we're really looking for here is the average, right? When you ask what's right in the middle of 4 and 12, you know, if I score a uh, 78 on one test and a 94 on another test, you know, what's right in the middle? What's my average is what we're asking. How do we do that? Well, to find k, which we're talking about being the average between 12 and 4, I'm always going to take the maximum value plus the minimum value and divide by 2. 12 plus 4, that's uh, 16. Then we divide that by 2. So 8 is right in the middle between 4 and 12. Okay, So k is 8. If you find k first, then the distance from, uh, from here to there, that could be a. Right? How big is that? Well, that would be 12 minus the 8. Okay, so a, you could think of as 12 minus 8. That would be the, the a value, the quote amplitude, is the absolute value is of, of a. So 12 minus 8 is 4. So the amplitude is 4. So if this is 8, we go up 4, we get to 12. This is 8 right here, we go down 4, we get to 4. Okay, so that seems to work out real well. So there's a and there's k. So we know a is 4, or maybe we'll choose to make it negative 4, depending on, on what we like in a minute. Uh, k is 8. OK. Um, let's see, let's figure out b. We can figure out what the uh, period is. Uh, well, the period will be from here to there, and then twice as much as that, right? right? So how far is it from there to there? Well, it's going to be twice as much as this from here to there. Okay, so we take 3 pi right, minus 5 pi over 3. That should give us the distance between. So the period, we're going to take 3 pi minus 5 pi over 3. That that's just going to give us from here to there. We need from here all the way to there. That's twice as much, so we'll multiply this by 2. So 2 times, we've got to get a common denominator here. That's 9 pi over 3 minus 5 pi over 3. Okay, that's uh, 4 pi over 3. Okay, so that's 8 pi over 3 is the period. And remember from before, b is equal to 2 pi over p. Just like p is equal to 2 pi over b, b is equal to 2 pi over p. p is 8 pi over 3. So we have 2 pi times the reciprocal, which is 3 over 8 pi. Pi cancels. 2 cancels the 8. That's a 4. So b is 3 fourths. Okay. b is 3 fourths. Yeah. Fix the colors here a little bit. B is 3 fourths. I'm going to write that in here. OK, so what's h? And are we going to use the sine or the cosine? Um, well, to me, it seems like it'd be pretty easy to say that this is the top of a cosine wave and to figure out you know, where, how far did that move over. So I'm going to use the cosine. 
and say, well, that's just a cosine wave that shifted to the right. Right how much? 5 pi over 3. If you think about it, you could always use a cosine wave and say it moved to the right 5 pi over, well, to the right however much this is. Okay. So then if we use a cosine wave, that's moved to the right 5 pi over 3. So we should have minus 5 pi over 3. So now all together we have y equals 4 times the cosine we picked of 3 fourths times x minus 5 pi over 3 plus 8. Right. So that'll do it. Okay. Um, I guess one more thing. For A, you can take big M minus uh, K. Right? That's what we did here. Or there's another little formula here. Just that K is M plus M over 2, M minus M. That means maximum minus minimum over 2. That's, that will also give you A. Okay, so that's just a, another way to find the value of A. And other than that, that should do, well, there shouldn't be anything other than that. That should do it. All right, so uh, I hope this helped you out. Uh, and thanks for watching. Let me know if you need any help with anything else.